Hello YouTubers and welcome to some very special YouTube video that I'm making because Nara and I are doing this for my channel. I'm also being asked to do this toolbox tour by a YouTube channel called Toolbox Tours. Now if you're watching this from my channel and you like a good nosy around other people's toolboxes see what they've got in their drawers if you go to the little link down there to Toolbox Tours, they've got a complete channel full of massive toolboxes. Some of them are bigger than the lorry that I drive, and most of them are more expensive than the house that I live in. And there's some spectacular toolboxes you can have a nosy in. Now, if you're watching this video from Toolbox Tours, and you'll see my little hairy fizzog for the first time, then again, a big warm hello to you. Uh, if you go to the link down there, I'm sure there'll be a link down there somewhere, you can click on there and you can go to my channel and you can have a nosy at all my little videos which involve sort of motorbikes and tractors and lorries and, and stuff and working obviously in my little workshop. Um, maybe there isn't enough hairiness in your life, maybe you do like tractors and stuff, maybe you've fallen in love with me and you want to stalk me on youtube that is fine just go down there click on the little subscribe button and you can stalk me as much as you like right then on with the tour i hear you cry so this is my helpers toolbox now a lot of people will be going oh my god helpers but as toolboxes go it's not bad i'm not a professional mechanic so i can't spend a fortune because these tools don't earn me any money i just tinker with them uh, I can claim I have slept with my toolbox because I was away in my lorry when I bought it and there was a deal going where you buy the bottom one and you get the top bit free. Now I've extended it, I've got a middle bit now but I never used to have that middle bit. So I bought the uh, bottom bit and got the top bit free when I was out on the road in my lorry and the foot, this bit went in the passenger seat and the top bit ended up in my bed. Uh, so that was an uncomfortable night. As time went on, I say I did a toolbox tour, if you look down my channel you'll see uh, an old toolbox tour. Uh, as time went on I sort of outgrew it and I now have the middle bit as well with a few more tools in as well. Uh, not a bad toolbox, lifetime warranty and Lafford stuff so it's not bad. Uh, wall bearings in the drawers and all the rest of it. Only little grumble I have is sometimes it's difficult to lock the drawers. You know, you, you, you lock the door and there's always one or two drawers that don't lock. Uh, so I should close it. That's not the locks. Oh, they all locked. Let's try the bottom one. So that one's not locked. I'm going to unlock it. There we go. That one's not. That one's not locked. Uh, right, we shall try it again. Now that one. On. Yeah. And the problem is, when you, I mean, I don't have anybody else in there, so locking it's not an issue. That one's locked, that one's not, that one's locked, that one's locked, that one's not locked. Um, but when you wheel it about, things tend to open, and then if too many open, it becomes top heavy. Now, hang on, I'm just going to mess around with this. We will get it closed. Right. Me a minute. I got it. I got it. Yes. Yay! All locked. Right. Just gotta put the. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, bit of an issue docking the drawers, but other than that, it's a good toolbox. Right, let's have a nosy round it. So externally, I have got some stickers on the top. I've got my Camel Trophy, because I like me, uh, I'm into my Land Rovers. I always wanted to do the Camel Trophy, but they stopped doing it before I had a chance to apply. Plus, I've got a nice G4 Challenge, which again is Camel Trophy. Well, it's like the replacement of the Camel Trophy. I have a knife sharpener on here, my magnetic tray for all sorts of bits and pieces. I've got a few of my favourite steam locos, I'm into steam trains as well, Land Rover badge, a few railway things, a GoPro, I use a GoPro a lot when I'm filming, and bikes for me cycling, all labelled up again, more I think, Flying Scotsman there, 
Red Arrow, another Land Rover, Ace Calf. I sometimes go, that's a famous calf in London, all the bikers used to meet. And I've had my dinner there a few times, my attempts at a Land Rover Ford. I drive a Ford Transit van, so that's my Ford sticker, a few more GoPros. Uh, Festin York Railway, I do like that, and Triumph, which is my motorbike. My Triumph, go on, and there we go. Uh, Land Rover owner, Camel Trophy sticker, Life of Limbs trailers, and it's boil. So, how many uh, have we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen full drawers with three small drawers and the bit at the top as well. Uh, also, externally, I have some welding clamps which I didn't have room for. I shall come around here. I have some welding clamps. I have a Spitfire, which I designed myself and uh, got made up onto a sticker that's on my side. I want a Seeking Helicopter on the other side. I haven't done that yet. GoPro and other race cast sticker. Cannondale. I do ride Cannondale bikes, not me Marin. There's me Cannondale. Uh, I've got a G-clamp and my screwdrivers that won't fit in the drawer on the outside here. My extra long ones. Brit part. So from the back you can really tell the difference. That top one is normally against a window, so that's faded. So you can tell the new ones and the older ones. And on the other side, oh, we'll pull him out a tiny bit. Nothing spectacular around this side, really. Just another welding clamp. Um, and your WD-40, which you've got to have. Uh, it's also tax disc. Uh, and that is the external part of my Halfords toolbox. Nothing exciting there. Right, let's have a nosy inside. So on the inside, now I do all sorts of manner of things. Oh yes, I've got a, I've got a Spitfire sticker there as well, another G4 challenge. So this is just sort of bits and bobs really. I've got a lot of chainsaw tools, spare chain, spark plugs for my strimmers and the rest of tensioning tool for the chainsaw a few other bits and pieces it is a multiple of tools this it's not just a mechanics toolbox you'll find a few weird ones obviously uh, light hand grenade chainsaw sharpening bits brushes of all sorts wire brushes a few different wire brushes uh, silicon sealants uh, magnet, these are these are handy. The amount of times I drop stuff um, and you can't get to them, so there's that. I've got a mirror for those awkward bits with a light on as well. Uh, what else have I got down here? A bit of glue for when nuts and bolts won't do. Chainsaw grease, more sealant, Allen keys. And the punch repair kit. So that leaves my top bottom. Nothing spectacular. Another tax disc as well. Right then, so I've got everything nicely labelled up. So this one tends to be a cycling, mostly cycling. Uh, so a few things in here valve converters, so I can convert a normal valve to the uh, other type. That is a chain wear indicator, tells me if my chain's worn or not. This is a tool for Mavic Collision wheels. Same with that. Disc pads. When you take your wheels out, they stop your disc pads closing completely. Cable tensioner. Spooky. Again from Mavic Collision wheels. Shimano SBT tool, another spoke tensioner. Um, can't remember what that's for. I think it's some sort of filter. No idea. Right, so that's my first little cycling drawer. Again, it's more cycling tools over here. These are my uh, putting threads in. That does the threads on the bottom bracket. I can't remember which does which one. One does the crank on the crank arms for the pedals. And the others, the wheels. Uh, do, 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 do. The old crank extractor. Don't really use them on modern bikes, but the old bikes that do. Another one, it's exactly the same one. It's got a handle. Tire levers down here. 
cassette extractor there. Again, you don't really use these anymore. It's getting them out, isn't it? But these are for the uh, wheel nuts. The, not the wheel nuts. Comb spanners. Oh, good grief. I've lost... <laughs> <laughs> My language has all gone to pot, but these are for doing the bearings on wheels. And sort of wheels have changed now, bearings. These are comb spanners. And uh, they don't nearly sort of use these anymore. But they do on the old bikes, so I still have them. Chain splitter. This is a tool here, which I've got to watch, for my crank extractor, which goes with that. Okay, now you can use this for the Holotech 2 if I put that in. If I put the, sorry, not the Holotech, just the first Holotech, the Holotech 1, I can use them. Holotech tool 2, it won't work with them. Uh, cassette extractor, bottom bracket extractor. I don't know why I've got two bottom bracket extractors. Uh, that's that one. Now, this one is more electrical. I've got little connections, wire cutters. These are for taking the sleeves off, they're quite handy. Very handy. Little testing thing there. Only for use with cars though, you don't want to go using this on your house electrics because uh, obviously 12 volts is firing off, it'll light the bulb up. But if you use it on 240 volts, you might get a little bit of an explosion. Uh, for taking the radio out of Fords. Now, this one is what you'd use for checking the electrics on your house. This, this will, uh, you don't touch the wire, you switch it on and that will glow red and make a buzzy noise if there is electric. There! So I'll say a little bit of mixture, not all cars, but all there, just a cloth for some reason. Right then, next one again is mainly a cycling. So again, more cone spanners. These are for headsets. That's my shock, my front fork. Shock pump! That there. Uh, more co that's a bottom bracket extractor. That's for me, uh, Holotech 2. Adjustable uh, cup and a chain whip. Chain whip down there, if you can see that. Again, for removal of the rear cassette. This thing is in used in conjunction for moving, well, so for putting in the headset cups, you use it for these as well. Different sizes, black and blue. Okay, that's what for this is for taking them out you put it in you can use a screwdriver but there's a risk of damaging it and what you do you pull it through the head tube that clips onto the lips and then you just give it a good whack with a mallet I just all different size pins on that one pedals taking the pedals off same with this one here pedals cup extractor Headset press with all the bearings. Now, also, I do have a few car ones in. This is my leak detection. Uh, what these do, you put these in your car if you've got a leak. You see the little things there. If it's slightly moist, they start flashing. Uh, if it's a severe leak, they start floating. If they start floating above your head, you have a dangerous leak and you should do something about it immediately. I have three of them. Uh, oh, I can't get in back in. There we go. Right. In here we have pliers. Everything's labelled up in my toolbox. So I've got my main pliers. Uh, I've got my mole grips down there. Smaller set of mole grips there. These are handy for getting all sorts, for getting cables and stuff. If you've got a cable or something, you can poke it down, get them and pull them out. And you've got a little clamp on them as well. Very handy. I've got these in all sorts of sizes. And I've got a big set down there. If I'm honest, I got them accidentally. I bought these off the internet and they were massive. <laughs> I got the wrong size. So I've kept them, but uh, these are the normal size ones. Internal and external spring clips. So that's my pliers drawer. In here, we're getting heavy duty now. Uh, obviously, I have an inflatable unicorn. Uh, underneath the inflatable unicorn, we have a Halfords half inch socket set. I've got me a. Oh dear, well, there you go. There's nothing special there. Ratchet, extension bar, breaker bar. Now, I've got a bigger breaker bar in my other one, which you'll see a bit later on. Uh, another extension bar, a few sizes that didn't come with the socket set that I needed for whatever reasons. And AFs and all the rest of it, another breaker bar, sorry not breaker bar, another extension, two of the bits and pieces. Now, 
This will get the snap-on people excited. I do have a snap-on tool. Look at that. That's a snap-on one. I got that from Chirk Car Boot for a fiver. There we go. So snap-on. I do have snap-on tools. Can't go wrong for a fiver though, can you? Let's put the inflatable unicorn back in there. There we go. Going down. And it's getting easier now because it's at a height now where the drawers where I can uh, use my tripod. So it's going to be a bit smoother from now on in. Right, so I've got my deep sockets just here. I've got my uh, star sockets here. Allen keys here. My normal sockets. Now this is my first um, socket set that I have. So it's not in a complete set. I bought this in bits and pieces. Um, I have my flexible head. I do like my flexible head. We have an extension bar. Again, Halfords lifetime warranty. It's years old. It's about ten years old. That and I broke it. I've got a short stubby one as well. Try and get it in frame. I'll bring him up a tiny bit. Uh, so short stubby one, which is nice with all my bars and joints and all the rest of it. Just got a flat bar there. Couple of adapters for different sizes. Well, it's not. There's different adapters there. An unusual deep socket, which I obviously don't have a size for, so I bought that. This is the extension bar I normally have. It's the longer one. It's a. It is the half inch one, but I've got a adapter on it to bring it down to the three eighths. But that's normally the one I go for because it's longer than the one in my half inch one. Uh, torque wrenches. Okay, this one goes from about 10 to 60 foot pounds of torque. And again, with these ones, you can um, get a lifetime warranty on, but you can move them. They do both threads, they do clockwise, and if you push it through, you've got your uh, anti clockwise threads as well, so you can do both ways. This one was about 60 pounds, foot for 60 pounds. And again, both sides. It goes to about 120, this one. Uh, he comes out there like so and goes in like so on that one. Now this one is actually half inch socket but he won't fit in there so he lives down here instead. Come on in here. That's in foot pounds. This I like. This is my um, for when something's rounded off. Uh, Sealy. It's a good kit uh, with these. They do clockwise, and a lot of uh, a lot of Strudis nut extractors they uh, only do anti-clockwise threads. These do both clockwise and anti-clockwise threads, so I'm good for both ways basically on them. It's a good bit of kit that Sealy's quite like them. Popping back in, and I've got my little Halfords thing. I don't use it very often. It's handy for little fiddly bits. I tend to use mostly is the ratchet with a screwdriver uh, for when I can't get a screwdriver in because there isn't enough room vertically to get the screwdriver in. So I can use that with the ratchet and then I use a leverage bar to force the uh, ratchet down onto it so it doesn't slip and it's good for getting in. And generally sometimes when the uh, top of the ratchet starts to touch something you can then no, normally the screws out enough to get a, a pair of mole grips on or something like that and that's that the only other thing again I've got again snap on fans will be excited I have another speed wrench which again it cost me about five pound again from car boots in a chirk and for five you can't go wrong can you uh, but that's all of my snap on tools uh, so I've just got basically two speed wrenches in three eighths and a half inch um, Apart from, I shall close that up now, apart from a snap-on jacket I got for my birthday, I can't remember, I've got it for birthday or Christmas. Anyway, I shall model that for you now. Lights! in the daylight. Just 
got to sort out the ambience. The little leak detectors. Right, you ready? Music! And in the middle section, which is my newest part of the toolbox, we have all my drilly bits. So I've got these, which are my anti-clockwise drills. Brilliant for drilling things out. Drills for tiles. I do do a little bit of housework as well. So these are for special drills for tiles. Don't crack the tiles. These are good. These are extractors. These are for getting them... Um, if I can get them open. These are for, for getting screws and and bolts out that are seized in. Again they're anti-clockwise, you drill into them there we go, they go into a, a drill and the both ends you can drill in and then remove them. Again they're anti-clockwise they're good. Tool extractor kit, well uh, again more extractor cassettes there we go, they're again for getting Duck bolts out and screws or whatever. Uh, I also use them for getting the studs out on my grey Fergie. I drilled a hole and whacked one of these in and uh, got it out that way. When you deal with old equipment you do need a lot of stuff for getting stuck stuff out. And these are just my normal drills. Oh, come here. Which I have a lot of. Come on. So yeah, those are just my normal drills, everyday use ones those, nothing special there. If I can get the damn thing shut, there we go, you can go back in there, like so. Right, my next one is my pullers, again this big one was used on my tractor to get the brake drum off, my, uh, it's a Lang one, uh, it's the handle there, it strips down into, it comes to pieces for storage. Uh, three-legged puller, but that can also be a two-legged puller as well. I've got these old ones as well. These are pretty good and pretty handy. I've got those in two sizes. I've got them out. I can't get them back in now. And again, a slightly smaller one. Go back in. And I've got these, um, which are for getting the coils out, suspension-wise. Uh, so it's all my uh, compressors and pullers sort of stuff in that drawer. This is sort of an odds and sods man drawer. I've got my remaining welding clamp down there. It's a bit of a welding. Got my hammer, some magnetic angle clamps, a few nuts and bolts, washers, nipples. Not the nipples you're probably thinking of. I know my views very well. I don't know why I say nipples you think of, but these are grease nipples. Always carry a load of those. There! Uh, split pins. Nice and simple. A few spare nuts and bolts. No, these are electrical connections. The decent ones, not the cheap Alba ones. Uh, got some of them. And a few nuts and bolts, and that's it for this drawer. Obviously in this drawer where my rubber chicken lives. And I've got my large spanner set. Uh, my spanners come from this biggie here, which is my uh, 34. And it, oh, getting back in there. Go on. So I'll go from 34 to, 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 to my 25 with me large spanners and that is my middle section that's the newest section of my toolbox okay so I had my big spanners in the middle drawer can you guess what's in the top drawer my lower case there we go there's all my spanners down here so for my normal spanners I've gone from 6mm to 24mm I'll say they're all like these alpha's professional spanners. They're not 
I don't go for cheap, cheap spanners, but say with snap-on spanners, so if I go for this 15, I mean, what could a snap-on spanner do that this can't? At the end of the day, they come with a lifetime warranty. I ain't broken one. Uh, they're reasonably well finished, and at the end of the day, the power comes from the person holding the spanner, not the spanner itself. So if I did have snap-on, I wouldn't be able to do anything different to what I can do with these anyway. Uh, so that's why I have them. Uh, so those are my normal spanners, so again, 6 to 24 is up there. And when I open this one, I've got 25 to 34 up there. So I've got a nice range of spanners there. I've got my brake pipe spanners here, which again, Alfred's Professional. Different sizes for doing brakes, brakes and clutch pipes and the rest of. Quite good, I've got my stubbies. Now these aren't actually halfers, these are just quite cheap. These are 19 to 10 mil on these. Um, they're not bad, I don't use them very often, but they're just... Halfords do do them, or they did do stubbies, but they didn't do a full range, there was like gaps in the sizes, and I don't like that, I like the full range of sizes. The ratchet spanners are Halfords, I go from 8 to 19 with these, and these are nice with the uh, flexi head as well, they're quite good as well. I must admit, I've never used it, but if I go for the 13, is that the 13? No, I've got the 14 there. I've got this little thing which gives me an extra ratchet. I plonk him in. Well, I've never ever used it, if I'm honest. There we go, he's in. So I've also got a ratchet as well, so I can have a 3 8 I can use that in my sockets. But, never used it. If I can get him out again. Come on. There you go, he's out. Uh, other than that, I've got these handy little things as well, which are quite good for getting into tight spaces, especially if you keep dropping. If you keep dropping, I'll go for this one. If you keep dropping, you're trying to get in somewhere and put it on your finger, and you can get that in. There's a little spring in there as well, so it'll actually hold the, the nut on your finger. So you've got to reach up somewhere and try and squid the bolt through and onto, onto the other end, you, you, you're pretty good, you don't have to get grease all over your hands and screwdrivers and whatever, you can just use these without using grease, they're quite a handy little thing. Don't come in many sizes though, um, and the unusual sizes, I've got a 13, 10, 8, 7 and a 5.5, .5. I don't think I'm ever going to use a 5.5, .5. uh, put him back in, that's my top drawer for my, uh, for my spanners. So not a bad little collection there. So those are the spanners I'd use for my car or my motorbike. For my tractor, there's actually two sets of spanners here. It's got two of every size in case I get a locking knot. And I need two spanners the same. I've got a 3 8 Go from 3 8 Again, these are health as professionals. All the way up to three quarter inch, basically. Um, say two of every one, and I've got another set of these as well. Again, the sizes uh, to get at. I uh, say so these are usually the spanners that I use on my tractor because my old it's normally the older stuff that uses those sizes. Uh, that's what I use them for. Unfortunately, half us don't do the bigger sizes, so uh, that's all I can have with them. Maybe if I do ever need a bigger size, I can. But I have got it in my half-inch socket set. Uh, I've got the bigger sizes on them anyway. Uh, down here, I've got my punches. Nice little range of punches down here. So if I ever need to whack anything. Not bad. They're nothing special, but you can put them on and whack them through like. That's them. Uh, this one I like. This is my impact screwdriver. Halford's one. I keep it in the box. I don't need it very often, but when you need it, you need it. Quite a heavy thing. A bit of good dose of WD-40. And a whack with that. Again, it does anti-clockwise and clockwise. Um, but yeah, nice little thing that. Nice and heavy as well, that. So you can really put it on and give it a damn good clout. Put in back. I have a range of hammers as well. Once I get in back in, once I get in back in, there we are. 
these back in. Come on! In you go. You know you want to. You know you want to. Right, so again, I've got my standards. I've also got sort of my striking area as well for hitting things with. So again, a nice range of different sized punches for whacking things with. And then my hammers. I've got my tap it to me whack it. Hammers. Uh, I've got a medium sized one as well. These these two are only uh, Bergen hammers. They're not high quality, but uh, they do the job. If I break them, I'll buy better ones. I did break the whack it one, so that has been replaced with a higher quality one. Can't remember the mate though. Um, no. Tool zone. It's a tool zone hammer, so you can give that a good thump with that. Also, if I want not to damage anything, I'll put a bit of wood over it and whack the wood. Uh, an old copper one, not too sure where this comes from. There's no make or anything on that, but that's just my copper one. Uh, so, yeah, that is a mixture of my spanner and my striking drawer. Go in. As I say, I've got my uh, tap it to my whack it. To my, I'm not going to ask again. Although that one doesn't fit in the toolbox. Right. Shut in. And screwdriver draw. Right. The only one really. That one is a whack it screwdriver. You can see it's got the steel bit going right through. So if I need to whack something, normally I use a punch or something. And I'd whack it with that. That lives down there. There's my electrical ones, they're not a massive fight. I do want to upgrade these because these are cheap ones really, they haven't got the guarantee on them. So I want to get the, uh, I want to get the good ones. Uh, other things that aren't screwed, I've got my little scraper there, handy for gaskets and the rest of. Getting them off, a few other little knickknacks like so. I've also got Allen keys in both sizes. These are nice long ones, it goes from about 10 millimeters to, I can't see because the size has gone off but so small that I've never used. Peel again, so from 3 8 5 16 one 4 I don't think I've ever used these. My little grey figure doesn't have Allen key bolts, so I don't really use them. And I've got a range of star ones as well. Because a lot of modern cars these days, like my Ford Focus, which I had, which I no longer have, did have a lot of stars in them. And don't think I have a vehicle that uses them anymore. Couple of little pointy things down here. These are handy for getting at little bits and pieces and scraping, getting little low wings out and holding things in place and pulling cables through and rest off. They live just down in here. I have a ratchet key. Ratchet key. Ratchet key. Ratchet key. Ratchet key. Now I've had this, this is not a mate, but I've had it a long time. And you can tell it's had a lot of use by the handle. I've had this since I was a kid. It's nice, it's magnetic, it's uh, never broken it. The handle's just a bit worn now, though, that's all. And I have lost that one there, which I was a bit gutted about. That. I'll say no make on that. I'm very attached to that one. It's my health is minute precision screwdrivers. And I'm about to get them out. That's all the different sizes down there. That's a nice little one. Again, Alfred's don't have any trouble with them. Lifetime one, and see if you break it, you can get your money back anyway, as long as you keep the receipts. I've got all my main screwdrivers here. Obviously, I've got the screwdrivers on the side as well, which you've seen that they're too big to fit in here. Uh, so, again, Alfred's again. And the star ones again, which I can't admit I hardly use. You can always tell by how clean the handles are. But yeah, got these as well. Again, I think my Ford Focus was the only car that had the star dials. And that's gone now. That is gone. So we don't really use them anymore. Uh, you generally find you don't get them on, on little grey Fergies. So uh, I don't very often use them. Right, next draw down. So we're moving to the uh, deeper drawers now. So when you come into the, oh for God's sake, this is, 
This is the third time this has happened this week and it's only Monday. So what happens when you keep your dynamite next to your blooming sharpening stones and your batteries? Hang on a second. We'll just uh, chuck this over here. So as I was saying, this is a, a, a deep drawer. I've uh, got a few odds and sods, safety goggles, batteries, tape measure. I've got a uh, metal ruler there. Scales. I used that for doing the swivels on my Land Rover. You can check the resistance. Um, I've got one of these bad boys for finding currents and checking currents. I, I use this on the uh, Dynamo on my tractor. I've got one of these digital calipers, which is all good for measuring stuff, finding the correct size holes, well, correct sizes of things. As, as always, it's putting it all back in it. Uh, I take measure back, batteries and goggles. Uh, little junior hacksaw, with some spare blades as well. I have got a big hacksaw. The big hacksaw is, um, I don't know if you can see it, the big hacksaw is just in centre now on the uh, workbench really, I've got a couple. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't live in here, it's just handier up there for some reason, that's why I keep it. Um, this again is for measuring temperatures, that goes with that. Pipe bender, don't break pipes and the likes of. I did tell you I've got some unusual uh, tools, and this again would be more at home in a carpenter's toolbox. But uh, I live in an old house, and I often need to do the doors. They swell up and seize up, especially the bathroom. So uh, I do have a plane. I like the old-fashioned ones. There's a good one. That one is a Stanley. Uh, it's a nice grade four. Uh, I do like new tools like that. Oil for the sharpening stone. Sharpening aid. And I've got a sharpening stone as well. That can also be used for chisels and, and, and what have you. Sharpen whatever with that, my knife and all sorts. Well, I've got a small one for my knife on the lid. This, I used to be an owner driver of a 3CX JCB and this was the uh, wheel brace, the wheel nuts. Um, I no longer have the JCB but I do for some reason have the wheel brace. Put it back in that way. Uh, a couple of things. I've got a bit of sandpaper. And um, we have a gasket scraper, which is a nice heavy duty one. I can really give the get the old gaskets off of an arm. That's a Helford's one. Nut splitters, three different sizes. Again, sort of a last resort. If, if heating them up doesn't work or anything like that, then uh, I can resort to the nut splitters. Only snag with them is if it's a rare nut or bolt on the Grey Fergie and they're difficult to get hold of, I might not want to break the nut. But sometimes you've got no choice. Um, after all, it is a 1955 tractor. Some nuts don't come off easy. Uh, and then I've got a selection of files. I've got a nice round one, triangular one. These are all Halfords. Uh, semicircle one. Just a plain flat one. And a little square one. There we go, those are all my files. And that's the uh, second deep draw down. Put these all back. So that's my deep draw. There's a little bit of room to fit a few more things in there, but uh, I've got everything I need mostly at the moment. And in my last draw, oh, that's tricky. Um, hang on. Get this. I got it. Got it. Sorted. Right, don't panic. Right. On my last draw, I have got a funnel for funneling things. Another funnel for funneling petrolly things with a filter in it. I've got a big funnel over there as well for the trouter. Uh Generally, uh, so it's a deep draw, I've got my tyre levers and lever bars. Everything's just sort of piled in here. I'll have to get a few things out. Lever bars, another lever bar, crowbar, that's a homemade tool for shock absorbers on Land Rovers, getting the pin in, 
So I'll put a clamp on it and push it in and I can put the uh, pin through. That's on my motorbike stand. Another punch. That's a broken one though. A great big pipe wrench. Spark plug extractor. Even all my vehicles are diesel. Well, apart from my motorbike. A rivet gun. Box spanner for Land Rover hubs. Or the series ones anyway. That's a cycling tool for putting threads on spokes, but the end's broken and now missing. Another lever bar that's good for hooking under and pulling. Grease gun for my bikes. That's a bleed kit for my hydraulic brakes on my bike. And this is Andy, this is a bleed kit for cars. It'll do uh, brakes and clutch. And you connect it up to your spare tyre. So you don't need anyone pushing the brake pedal or pushing the clutch and it just is a massive reservoir and you just fill that up with the fluid and it just feeds it through and so you've got no more air bubbles and tighten up the bead pedal. And that is my little tool chest. My bottom saw anyway. I've just got to put everything back now. Making me getting everything out. Perhaps I can organise it better now. The, uh... Those are for my motorbike stand by the way, which I don't use anymore because it's got a proper lift now. Right, I'll leave the car there. He's going to the way. There we go. Job done. Why well, that's it for me. Big thank you for watching. If you've made it this far through the video, you are indeed very special. Remember, if you've enjoyed it, click on the thumbs up. If you're a little bit dazed and confused and not sure what the hell you've just watched, then perhaps best go make a cup of tea and have a lie down. If you are in the way of thinking about the thumbs down button, just a little tip for you. Just, just I don't want to um, scare you, but the chicken knows where you live. So thanks for watching. Bye.